What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back. And I really feel like for some of you who have been very active in the comment section, I wanted to answer some common questions from the community as you're starting to build out your NVMe SSD enclosures like these. And I want to share some results that I've gotten for both Mac and a PC. And of course, I'll throw in the M1 iPad Pro where I tested the one terabyte Samsung 970 Evo Plus as well as the one terabyte Western Digital SN750 in these identical USB 4 enclosures that are also backward compatible. I'll get into those details, but what I want to do is address some of the specifics with each device. And I want to reiterate to really many of you out there who have been hitting me up in the comment section that when it comes to the advertised read and write speeds, especially as they pertain to these enclosures, I will try to keep the information as simple as possible, but I do wanna bring in some context here to the conversation and link up some resource be resources below so that if you need to get a little bit more information, that's totally fine. So many of you had reported that you had gotten an NVMe SSD that was a PCIe Gen 4. And those would typically get around 5,000 like read and maybe around four to 5,000 on that write, depending on the SSD that you chose. Some of them can be much higher, but do keep in mind that this is based off of a, a motherboard that can support those particular speeds. And this is obviously installed internally inside a PC. Whereas with these enclosures, what we're gonna be uh, limited to is the board and the chip within the enclosure, which it, it really does depend on the manufacturer. And of course, I don't know all of the manufacturers, um, but this also is dependent on the external Thunderbolt connection, which will you know will also point to that being a bottleneck for you as well. So unless you're actually getting a great deal on a PCIe Gen 4 SSD, your dollar would probably be better spent on a PCIe Gen 3 SSD, like the ones that I'm actually comparing here. And they will typically advertise anywhere from three to 3,500 on that read or write, give or take, some a little bit more, but it really just depends on the device that you're using it with. So let's actually jump into these details, but as I've also said uh, in several videos before, when it comes to the M1 hardware, there are still those hardware limitations in the Thunderbolt controller and retimers. So feel free to check out those videos where I go into like more detail than I am today. Now, of course, my testing will include some data on 4K video timelines uh, because that's kind of the nature of this particular channel, but also larger folder transfers of around 260 gigs with these USB 4 enclosures housing the SN750. And of course, then again, the identical closure enclosure uh, with the Samsung 970 Evo Plus. And in some of these tests, it's interesting because the Western Digital so far, when it comes to Thunderbolt 3. So Samsung actually has a 96 layer TLC NAND over the 64 layer TLC in the Western Digital, but it seems like the Western Digital is managing that cache just a little bit better in the, in the scenario of Thunderbolt. So of course, let's actually start out with uh, some, some, some synthetic benchmarks and, and benchmarking the Intel Mac. So getting out my notes here, we used uh, DiskMark for uh, these on, on the Mac, and what we got was for the SN750, 1927 on the read and 1960 on that write with XFAT. For the APFS file format, which if you're exclusive on Mac OS, especially in the latest iterations of the OS, I would highly recommend it, 2795 on the read and 2572 on that write. And then of course, moving down with the Evo Plus, 2076 on the read and 885 on the right with XFAT and then 2776 and 1140 on that right with APFS. And I did test that several times and I've had many of you reach out to me with very similar results. Now, of course, benchmarking that against the M1, Evo Plus 2721 with that read and 704. And this again is uh, APFS and then 3119 on the read and 1202 on the right for the SN750. So again, very interesting uh, scenarios here. Like I said, check out those other videos with the M1 Mac where I go into more details. And of course, for those of you that are probably most interested in file transfer, 
let's get into that data with 260 gig folder here uh you know which again many of you are are likely either moving much smaller files and folders but i wanted to go big here so with the sn750 going from the external to the internal we got one minute and 44 seconds and from the internal of the m1 mac to the external writing that data i did get a peak right uh, at 2.2 gigs with it actually averaging out at about 1.6 gigs and that took three minutes and one second now moving over to the 970 evo plus from the external to the internal a peak read of 2.8 gigs within an average dropping down to about 1.2 gigs that was two minutes 37 seconds from the 970 evo plus to the internal and then from the internal to external writing that data the peak write it ended up at 874 megs within an average of 625 taking six minutes and 19 seconds and i did retest that several times and was getting roughly within a couple of seconds or or two or three those same results now let's actually move over to the pc because what happens here is that we don't have a Thunderbolt uh, controller on that or it's not on the board or a Thunderbolt port. So we do have USB-C and it is an AMD Ryzen 5600X. Now, as I'd stated before about the motherboard and the controllers, this is not gonna support Thunderbolt, but what it will fall back to is USB 3.1 Gen 2. So on Crystal Disk, the benchmark, uh, I tested both XFAT and NTFS and they were basically pretty much the same. So with the SN750, the read was 985 and the write 1029. Whereas on the uh, 970 EVO Plus, 985 read, 1033 write. So really not much difference at all there. So transferring from the internal, so silicon power, I can link that up and I did a video on that one. So from the internal, uh, to the Western Digital SN750, we sustain an average of around 650 to 660, and that folder transferred in six minutes, 23 seconds. Now the 970 Evo Plus, transferring that, those, that 260 gigs from the 970, we sustain an average of 840 until about the last 30 gigs, and then it just plummeted, or not really plummeted, but it dropped significantly to 650 and just sustained that, and it took five minutes and 17 seconds. Now, transferring from the silicon power to the 970 EVO Plus, the sustained average, 660 pretty much across the board, six minutes and 20 seconds for that file transfer or really that entire folder to transfer now of course throwing in the m1 ipad pro uh, i have mentioned this uh, several times on the channel we transferred that same folder uh, from the ipad over to the 970 evo and getting transfer uh, that got up to about a gig with it landing at around 880 and like after that first 50 seconds then it just sort of hung out at about 880 on that transfer and then it took four minutes and 40 seconds whereas transferring that same folder to the sn750 that sustained an average of about 1.27 gigs uh, give or take about 10 megs or so and that actually took three minutes and 12 seconds so again this is actually something where the, that thunderbolt speed for whatever reason on the 970 evo plus it just it, it throttles back uh, because of that cache, I believe, based on my testing. Whereas if it was sustaining, it, it'll sustain based on uh, like constantly just transferring those files and folders. I did it over and over again at that uh, 3.1 Gen 2 speed. It seemed to just maintain a pretty decent transfer rate and it, it didn't really seem to need to throttle back at all. And of course, for those of you that are also interested in a, another real world benchmark, 4K compressed export here, full timeline corrected, and you know all of the bells and whistles uh, that I typically upload with 970 EVO Plus exported in five minutes and 32 seconds, whereas the SN750 exported in five minutes, 25 seconds. I do not think a few seconds here or there is really earth shattering or really that concerning. So again, for video editing, you're gonna be fine. And so what does all of this really mean to really help you with that buying decision? I still think that you're gonna be great with either of these SSDs. And I just say, 
Go ahead and research the enclosures that you're using, what's available in your country or wherever you can get it online, which I can't speak to them all. I don't know every manufacturer, but with some cursory searches, you it, it really can net you some additional details on what chipsets that that manufacturer is using. And I do like the Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 enclosures specifically in my workflow, since generally speaking, it would be compatible with a USB-C device that falls back to that USB 3.1 Gen 2 speed. And I, you know, for right now, I do think that the because of all of the manufacturing shortages that I've often talked about on this channel, uh, that both Western Digital and Samsung, and really Samsung specifically, that these components used in the SSDs will typically net you a more consistent experience. And of course, your mileage may vary, but again, Samsung is especially focused on that control of the components that they use. But really, if you're looking to run apps, virtual machines, or really just working on, like off of these SSDs, you should have enough throughput with either one of them. So even if you're running a RAID setup with multiple SSDs, and this of course is dependent on the operating system and of course the hardware that you're using, but I would imagine that with multiple, like multiple SSDs, in that enclosure, whatever like box that you're you're running that RAID in, you should still get very good performance as I was really just testing a single SSD when it came to these larger file transfers. So that workload could be better distributed among those SSDs. But honestly, if you're running a RAID setup, then you're likely very informed as to the intricacies between each of these SSDs and many of the others. So of course, Let's get you out of here on this one. Find me here or over on Twitter. But again, hit me up in the comment section below. You go rock those faces and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.